Nerd Dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 36 in our series, Creative Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. And as you can see, I'm not doing a screen share right now. We're going to talk a little bit about objects before we actually go and delve into the more object-oriented side of Ruby programming. So I figured it would be good to do an overview of objects using a real-life example, or real-life examples of objects. So we have here dice. Each one of these dice has properties. You can look at it. It's got a background color. It's got a font color. It's got a number of sides on it. If we look at our D6s. We've got potentially a style that could be a property, one with dots or one with numbers. Each one of these, if you roll it, so you can, it has a value now of 10. Roll it again, value of 6. So each one of these things are kind of attributes of real life objects, dice, and we're going to want to reflect that as we create our objects in our nerd dice gem. So just like real life, their objects have properties, number of sides, color, style. They have things that you can do with them. We're going to roll this dice. Oh boy, a natural 20. We're going to, and then um, so essentially properties, methods, ability to instantiate and do things with them. Just about everything in Ruby is an object with the exceptions of blocks and a couple other, um, things. Um, and often those things will still return, um, objects once they're done executing. And then... In Ruby, you'll have a class, which think of that as the factory. So I'm making an order. I would like a, a very small order of one 20-sided die with a purple background, gold foreground. And then you've got it and roll the nine. So that would be kind of, you take the model, the pattern of a die you put particular properties to it, usually with the, uh, the initialize method, you'll call die.new, set some properties to it. Some of them you pass in as parameters, other ones are set automatically. Now you've got a new die. And then if you have a group of them, you would initialize each one using the same class because the the class will allow you to instantiate many different kinds of dice. So you'll have a six-sided die, a four-sided die here, and even ones that aren't represented in physical reality. With nerd dice, you could make a seven-sided die uh, because we're not really, once you get into computer, you're not as limited by actual geometry when you're creating these things, so it's a, uh, and then you'll be able to, once you, once we create our die, we'll create a, a dice group, or dice set, I'm not sure what I'll call it yet, but that would be, let's say you want to roll d20 with advantage, you would instantiate two d20s, activate the roll method on both of them, and then in your kind of parent class, the, the collection class, you would look, I've got a 14 and 11, I keep the 14, I don't count the 11, the roll is a 14. So that's our, our real world overview of objects and using dice as a kind of didactic option. We'll now move on to our screen share portion. So now that we've seen those examples of real life dice as objects. Let's take a look at how this works in Ruby. So, so far what we have been doing most of is 
class methods, or in this case, actually module methods, because we never actually instantiate nerd dice. So we have an example here of a class. This is an inheritance class. It's kind of, at least in our code, pretty boring. It inherits everything from standard error, but if you do nerd dice, two colons to namespace it and then error, it'll be its own type of object. If you look down here, when this configuration method is setting the, this is a, uh, a kind of a module instance variable, the configuration variable here. And if it doesn't exist, so that's what the or equals symbol means, it'll create a configuration dot new. So the way that objects are instantiated in Ruby is that you've got a pe public method called dot new, which may or may not take arguments depend on how, depending on how you construct it. And if we go and look in our configuration class here, so you can see it's in the module nerd dice the class name is configuration. So if we were outside of the uh, the nerd dice module, you would have to do nerd dice double colon configuration, as we can see here. And then if we look at this class, so like we had with our dice, we have methods. This, the new method in nerd dice configuration dot new will actually invoke the the private method initialize. And you can see that the argument uh, structure, the method signature is compatible for this. So def initialize the private method takes no arguments. And in our case, new also takes no arguments. What this does is thinking about, again, our die, the properties of those things in the initialize method, you set instant for instance variables, which are the properties of your object to equal things. So these are just setting default values. So the ability score array size is by default six. The randomization technique is by default random object when you initially do these things. And then you can call, you can see here, attribute readers and attribute accessors. So uh, an accessor lets you, this ability score array size, if you do ability score raise size without anything else, it'll report back what that value is. So you go in and I'll pull this up in the console. So we'll we'll do nerd dice duration. We'll assign this to a variable. Nerd dice configuration, and we go nd config. Let's see, it's an instance of nerd dice configuration. Ability to score array size is six. Randomization technique is random object. So attribute reader. We can do nd config dot the name of our attribute reader. return the value. We can also, if we want to, because this is an attribute accessor and it has both reader and writer properties, we can do equals seven. Say you want to add a seventh ability. Now, when we look at that, the value will be seven. If we just look at ND config, it now shows that instance variable ability score array size equal to being seven. So um, some of these, you can see the refresh seed interval randomization technique. Those will raise an error if you don't have a valid value. So let's say And you can config dot 
technique. NIQUE equals See, we'll raise an error saying what the value valid values are and that you haven't done one of them. Likewise, we did a custom, so we've got the reader for randomization technique, and then we did a custom writer, randomization technique equals, and then the value we want to set it. We did the same thing with refresh C interval because we wanted to have custom behavior on that. So um, we do full equals the string six. That'll say must be a positive integer or null. So that's what we get there. And in general, what we'll be looking at as we try to instantiate our dice. So we want to think about the, the properties that we'll have when we create our um, when we create our class so that it will allow us to create those dice and and roll them uh, and s store the appropriate properties of them like number of sides the value on it those sorts of things so so if we look at our backlog we've got this this issue at the top ability to inspect individual dice and take actions on them. So this is kind of what we're, we're shooting for. And it's going to take more than one class to get us there. So we think about each individual die would be an instance of a die class. And then we'd have our collection of dice, which would be its own class. And we'll need to implement both of those in order to to get things working. So we've got kind of our requirements here. We want to be able to track the, the properties and values of individual dice and then roll it up and no pun intended and be able to act on the, the collection of those dice and allow for more sophisticated things than the total dice method provides. So what we'll do is we'll break break that down. Uh, just one more thing before we do that regarding object oriented programming and, and uh, um, object creation here. So if we go back to our our nerd dice module, the module method total dice here. So this is this runs very quickly because it's essentially a functional sort of deal. It's just doing what you can in order to provide the total. So it, that's what, uh, what happens there. So that there, there isn't a lot going on other than the, the execution of the die roll as many times as you need it to. Uh, and it's, it, it, because of that, it runs very quickly. When you start instantiating objects, there's overhead associated with that. So if we do the equivalent of the die roll with total dice, you've got to go up the stack, create, um, call the initialize method on, on die. Each time you do it, you're going through, you're setting the properties, you're uh, potentially doing things that involve the uh, any super classes that it inherits from and um, and then you're taking up memory even if it's a small object it has a memory footprint um, which if you were to do this a million times it'll add up so just to keep those things in mind that there is a trade-off and it's one that I think we're, we're willing to make and we have if you want to go fast and you just care about the total call 
nerddice.totaldice if you care about taking more actions on the individual dice will open up that additional functionality for you, but there's going to be a, a performance trade-off for that. I, I think that's, uh, that's fine. Um, and just kind of anything else there, programming's all about trade-offs. Know the, the right tool for the job and use that, that tool when, when possible. So we go back to our, our backlog. I'll just, I'm gonna take this ability to inspect individual dice and take actions on them. I'm going to break it down into smaller pieces. So I'll pause and do that. So for now, I've broken this down into essentially two cards per, per class. So write specs for the die class, implement the die class so the specs pass, write specs for dice set, implement those so the specs pass. The this might wind up being broken off into into more, especially this this die set class it might have a bit more to it than the die class, but we'll we'll start with uh, kind of our sim simpler use case and one that's necessary in order to implement the the collection anyway, and we'll go from there. So I'll move this issue into whoa, where is it? It's possessed move that issue into in progress and we'll stop the recording here and we'll pick up in our next uh, episode to start writing those specs for our die class and we'll go from there thanks for watching this stateless codecast be sure to like comment subscribe and spread the word you can follow us on social media at stateless code until next time keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.